In this video, we'll see how to program PIC18 F252 with PIC3 module and MPLAB XID. First, we'll learn which connections should be made between the microcontroller and the PIC3 module. Then, by using its digital I/O pins, first we'll be blinking an LED. Then, in another example, we'll learn how to control a four-digit seven-segment display. Let's see our connections for programming the PIC18 F252 with the PIC3 module. As you can see, the PIC18 F252 has 28 pins and according to its data sheet, 23 of them can be used as digital I.O. which are distributed to three ports as A, B and C. And port A has 7 pins, B and C have 8 pins each. Now let's see these connections on the pin diagrams of the PIC3 and the microcontroller. We are connecting the first pin, MCLR, to the MCLR pin on the microcontroller. Unlike what we did for programming the PIC12 F683, we will now connect the VDD pin of the PIC3 to the VDD pin of the microcontroller. The reason for this is that I could not manage to program the device with my external power supply. However, after programming it with the PIC3, it works just fine with the 5 volt power supply. Pin 3 will be connected to common ground. Pin 4, which is the PGD pin, will be connected to the PGD pin on the microcontroller. Pin 5, PGC pin, will be connected to the PGC pin on the microcontroller. And pin 6 won't be connected. It's suggested to connect a 10K ohm resistor between the MCLR and the VDD pins. So you can see this resistor here coming out of the MCLR pin and being connected to the VDD pin right here. The biggest disadvantage of the PIC18 F252 microcontroller is that it doesn't have an internal oscillator. So we have to connect an external crystal to obtain a clock signal. In order to do this, I've connected a 16 MHz crystal between the OSC1 and the OSC2 pins. And as advised in the datasheet, added 222 picofarad capacitors on each pin, which can be seen right here. And I've connected an LED to the RA0 pin over a 330 ohm resistor. Now let's open MPLAB XID and CRC code for the blink LED example for the PIC 18 F252. Okay, now you can see our connections on the breadboard. We have our PIC 3 module connected to our breadboard with six jumper cables. And we have our microcontroller unit here, which has 28 pins. And you can see that we are getting the VDD from the PIC 3 module. Our ground is connected to common ground and we are extending our ground to this side of the breadboard as well and from the VDD pin you can see that we have this 10k resistor connected to the MCLR pin and MCLR pin is connected to the first pin of the PIC3 module we have our PGD and PGC connections right here and our LED is connected to the RA0 pin over a 330 ohm resistor and as we mentioned previously we have our high speed crystal right here which is 16 megahertz it's connected to the OSC1 and OSC2 pins and from its two pins we have 22 picofarad capacitors connected to the ground and now let's check our code in MPLAB X IDE these lines have been created by the configuration bits part and you can see that we are selecting the high speed oscillator here and we are disabling the system clock switch bit. Power up timer is disabled, brownout reset is disabled, watchdog timer is disabled. Maybe one of the most important bits that I can mention here is the LVP pin and when I set the LVP pin to on the microcontroller was not running the uploaded code correctly when it was connected to a 5 volt power supply. So make sure that you have the LVP set to off. The rest of the bits are mostly related with code protection. And here we define our crystal frequency as 16 MHz. We are including the X8 compiler's header file here. And this is our main function, which is really simple as you can see in the first line. We are setting the A0 as output by setting it to 0. And in the while one loop, we set the pin first to high, so the LED is going to be on. Then we are delaying for one second, and then setting it to off, and again delaying for one second. So 
let's build the code. Okay, build is successful. And now let's load the code to our microcontroller. Connecting to programmer. Device erased programming configuration memory and in a couple of seconds it's going to be finished. Okay, programming verify complete. And you can see that our LED is on for one second and then off for one second. So we can change these durations. For example, let's make it three seconds on and one second off. And load it again. And it's loaded. So we are going to see that it's going to be on for three seconds off for one second, again on for three seconds, and so on. Now let's see our connections for our second setup. In this example, we are going to be using a four digit seven segment common anode display, which is shown here. And this one has 12 pins. Since we have many digital IO pins in our microcontroller, we don't need to use a shift register like we did in our previous examples. So you can see that we are going to be using RA0, RA1, RA2 and RA3 pins in order to control the digit pins on the 7 segment display which are 12, 9, 8 and 6. So this area is going to be related with this section and the 7 segment on the digits will be controlled by port C. So the RC0 will be connected to 3, RC1 5, 10, 1, 2, 4, 7, and 11. So this port, port C, is going to be controlling the digits that can be seen here. Now let's open MPREB XID and see our C code. Okay, let's take a look at our circuit setup. You can see that this four digit seven segment display is connected to our microcontroller as we showed in the diagram. However, I forgot to mention one thing. The ports RA0, 1, 2, and 3, which are going through the common anode of the four digits, are connected to the display over 330 ohm resistors. So you need four 330 ohm resistors. And the rest of the connections are just the same as we showed on the diagram. Now let's take a look at our code. In the beginning of the code, we can see that we have the same configuration bits, so nothing changes from our previous example. And we again have our crystal frequency at 16 megahertz. We are including an additional library here, the math library. And we are defining a numbers array, which is numbers underscore common edit, which demonstrates the numbers starting from zero, ending at nine. So we have our numbers here. And we have a digit array, which we are going to use for sending the numbers to the specific digits. And we have another array ARR, which is consisted of four elements. And we have our number to send integer variable. In our main function, first we set the port A and port C as output, since we are going to be controlling the seven segment display with them. And we are setting all the output ports to zero initially. Here we define J as an index that we are going to use in our loop. And in the while one loop, we set this number to send value to 1258. This can be anything. You can also use a variable here that you are creating in your microcontroller. So you can monitor it from the seven segment display. And in these lines, we are separating the digits of our number, which will be one corresponding to ARR0, two to ARR1 and etc. And in the for loop, we are going to be sending these digits one by one. And in this line, we are creating a three milliseconds of delay. Now let's build the code. Build is successful. And let's load the program to the microcontroller. Yeah, I received the 
connection failed let's try once again okay i think it's going to work right now device erase programming configuration memory and program verify complete and we can see our number on the four digit seven segment display okay now i'm going to disconnect the picky tree and i'm going to disconnect it from the breadboard and i'm going to use this five volt regulator as a power supply I'm going to connect the VDD to 5 volts. Okay, you can see that our code is running on the microcontroller and it's displaying our number. This was the end of the video. I hope it's been useful for you. If you have any questions or comments, please write them in the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you in another video.